Kingston Wharves Limited. We are a part of your lives. Moving cargo to support your way of life while supplying your business. We sustain life and health, doing the heavy lifting so you and your family can access life-giving supplies and maintain a positive well-being. We are integral to Jamaica's economic growth and job creation, underpinning the ever-changing landscape of our island and paving the way for a brighter future. Deeply committed, integrated and ever-present in your lives, while you are sleeping, we are working hard through the night. Multi-purpose, multi-user, relentless. We never stop until we deliver. For nearly 80 years, we have partnered with you and we remain committed to our promise to see you through every aspect of what you do. Kingston Wharves Limited, we are a part of your lives. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. May we stand together for prayer? Our Father, we thank you for this beautiful Wednesday morning. We thank you that you have been good to each one of us, and indeed you have been good to this organization, company, Kingston Wolves. We thank you that we have the great privilege of inviting you into our presence and into this meeting. We therefore pray that this meeting will achieve all the purposes intended, that Lord, the blessings that you have caused to come upon this company will flow through to the shareholders and the stakeholders and management and staff. We also pray that you'll grant guidance as the various matters are raised Thank you for this great organization. And as we talk about the business of Kings and Wolves in this meeting, may indeed we see the benefits flowing not only to the company, but also to the country. We give you thanks as we pray your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thanks. Thank you, Alfred. The notice convening the meeting, which can be found on page five of the annual report, has been circulated to members. And I now propose that we take this notice as having been read. I wish to inform you that the record date by which proxies are to be exercised at this meeting must have been lodged with the company at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. We received proxies representing 70% of the company's issued stock. A list of those proxies is available for inspection. The share register, articles of incorporation, and minutes of the last AGM are also available for inspection by members on the company's website. Ladies and gentlemen, the accounts and the reports of the directors and auditors have all been circulated to members previously. And at this point, I would like to announce what you've all been waiting for and introduce Ms. Rochelle Thompson from PwC, Chartered Accountants, the company's auditors, to read the auditor's report, which may be found on pages 57 to 62 of the annual report. Give her a round of applause for this important address. Good morning, everyone. Independent Auditor's Report to the members of Kingston Wharves Limited. Report on the audit of the consolidated and standalone financial statements. Our opinion. 
In our opinion, the consolidated financial statements and the standalone financial statements give a true and fair view of the consolidated financial position of Kingston Wharves Limited, the company, and its subsidiaries, together the group, and the standalone financial position of the company as at 31 December 2023, and of their consolidated and standalone performance and their consolidated and standalone cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with IFRS accounting standards and with the requirements of the Jamaican Companies Act. What we have audited. The group's consolidated and standalone financial statements comprise the group statement of financial position as at 31 December 2023, the group statement of comprehensive income for the year then ended, the group statement of changes in equity for the year then ended, the group statement of cash flows for the year then ended, the company statement of com financial position as at 31 December 2023, the company statement of comprehensive income for the year then ended, the company statement of changes in equity for the year then ended, the company statement of cash flows for the year then ended, and the notes to the financial statements comprising material accounting policy information and other explanatory information. Basis for opinion. We conducted our audit in accordance with the International Standards of Auditing, ISAs. Our responsibilities under those standards are further described in the auditor's responsibility for the audit of the consolidated and standalone financial statement section of our report. We believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. Independence. We are independent of the group in accordance with the International Code of Ethics for Professional Accountants, including international independent standards issued by the International Ethics Standard Board for Accountants, IESBA code. We have fulfilled our other ethical responsibilities in accordance with the IESBA code. Our audit approach. Audit scope. As part of designing our audit, we determined materiality and assessed the risk of material misstatement in the consolidated and standalone financial statements. In particular, we considered where management made subjective judgments, for example, in respect of significant accounting estimates that involved making assumptions and considering future events that are inherently uncertain. As in all our audits, we also address the risk of management override of internal controls, including, among other matters, consideration of whether there was evidence of bias that represented a risk of material misstatement due to fraud. How we tailored our group audit scope. We tailored the scope of our audit in order to perform sufficient work to enable us to provide an opinion on the consolidated financial statements as a whole, taking into account the structure of the group, the accounting processes and controls, and the industry in which the group operates. The group has 12 reporting components. The company was selected for a full scope audit as it was determined to be financially significant, while audits of certain account balances were performed on seven other components. The components are all located in Jamaica, with the accounting records of all entities maintained at the same location. A single audit team was responsible for the audits of all components selected for testing. Key audit matters. Key audit matters are those matters that, in our professional judgment, were of most significance in our audit of the consolidated and standalone financial statements of the current period. These matters were addressed in the context of our audit of the consolidated and standalone financial statements as a whole and informing our opinion thereon, and we do not provide a separate opinion on these matters. Key audit matters. Valuation of freehold land, property, and buildings for the group and company. Please refer to notes 2D, 4, and 15 to the consolidated and standalone financial statements for disclosures of relating accounting policies and balances. Freehold land and plant and buildings totaling 16.7 billion and 15.4 billion for the group and 10.9 billion and 12.4 billion for the company standing alone are carried at fair value within the property, plant, and equipment on the group and company statements of financial position, respectively. These balances are significant to the financial statements of the group and company as a whole, representing in aggregate 54.4% of the groups and 49.2% of the company's total assets at year end. The group's valuation policy for freehold land, plant, and buildings allows for periodic but at least triennial valuations by external independent valuation experts 
who are engaged in the current year to perform a reevaluation exercise. We focused on this area as determining the fair value in respect of freehold land, plant, and buildings is, by its nature, subjective, with significant judgment applied to the assumptions relating to useful lives, contractors' charges, labor rates, material costs, property size, price per square foot, location, age, and condition, and due to the materiality of the revaluation gains that directly impact the company's and group's statement of comprehensive income. How our audits address the key audit matter? In order to address the matter, we perform the following procedures amongst others. Address the objectivity, competence, and capabilities of management's external evaluators to determine whether there was any affiliation to the group and whether they hold the requisite professional qualifications and experience to carry out reliable valuations of the groups and companies freehold land, plants, and buildings. Inspected the file and valuation reports and agreed their final value to the groups and companies accounting records. Recalculated the revaluation gains by reference to the valuation reports and the accounting records. For a sample of external valuations, we compared the current valuations for the plant and buildings with the previously computed valuations to determine whether useful lives and ages of properties were consistent. Reviewed the valuations with the assistance of our own independent experts and performed an independent evaluation of the assumptions that underpin the valuations, including by reference to the relevant market data. Based on the procedures performed, the values recorded by management for the fair values and the revaluation surplus were, in our view, not unreasonable. Other information. Management is responsible for the other information. The other information comprises the annual report, but does not include the consolidated and standalone financial statements and our auditor's report thereon, which is expected to be made available to us after the date of this auditor's report. Our opinion on the consolidated and standalone financial statements does not cover the other information and we will not express any form of assurance conclusion thereon. In connection with our audit of the consolidated and standalone financial statements, our responsibility is to read the other information identified above when it becomes available and in doing so, consider whether the other information is materially inconsistent with the consolidated and standalone financial statements or our knowledge obtained in the audit or otherwise appears to be materially misstated. When we read the, the annual report, if we conclude that there is a material misstatement therein, we are required to communicate the matter to those charged with governance. Responsibilities of management and those charged with governance for the consolidated and standalone financial statements. Management is responsible for the preparation of the consolidated and standalone financial statements that give a true and fair view in accordance with IFRS accounting standards and with the requirements of the Jamaican Companies Act and for such internal control as management determines is necessary to enable the preparation of consolidated and standalone financial statements that are free from material misstatements, whether due to fraud or error. In preparing the consolidated and standalone financial statements, management is responsible for assessing the groups and the company's ability to continue as a going concern, disclosing as applicable matters related to going concern and using the going concern basis of accounting unless management either intends to liquidate the group or company or to cease operations or has no realistic alternative but to do so. Those charged with governance are responsible for overseeing the group and company's financial reporting process. Auditors' responsibilities for the audit of the consolidated and standalone financial statements. Our objectives are to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the consolidated and standalone financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion. Reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance, but is not a guarantee that an audit conducted in accordance with ISAs will always detect a material misstatement when it exists. Misstatements can arise from fraud or error and are considered material if individually or in aggregate, they could reasonably be expected to influence the economic decisions of users taken on the basis of these consolidated and standalone financial statements. As part of an audit in accordance with ISAs, we exercise professional judgment and maintain professional skepticism throughout the audit. We also identify and assess the risk of material misstatement of the consolidated and standalone financial statements, whether due to fraud or error, 
design and perform audit procedures responsive to those risks and obtain audit evidence that is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. The risk of not detecting a material misstatement resulting from fraud is higher than for one resulting from error, as fraud may in involve collusion, forgery, intentional omissions, misrepresentations, or the override of internal control. Obtain an understanding of internal controls relevant to the audit in order to design audit procedures that are appropriate in the circumstances, but not for the purpose of expressing an opinion on the effectiveness of the group and company's internal control. Evaluate the appropriateness of accounting policies used and the reasonableness of accounting estimates and related disclosures made by management. Conclude on the appropriateness of management's use of the going concern basis of accounting and based on the audit evidence obtained, whether a material uncertainty exists related to events or conditions that may cast doubt on the group or company's ability to continue as a going concern. If we conclude that a material uncertainty exists, we are required to draw attention in our auditor's report to the related disclosures in the consolidated and standalone financial statements, or if such disclosures are inadequate to modify our opinion. Our conclusions are based on the audit evidence obtained up to the date of our auditor's report. However, future events or conditions may cause the group or company to cease to continue as a going concern. Evaluate the overall presentation, structure, and content of the consolidated and standalone financial statements, including the disclosures and whether the consolidated and standalone financial statements represent the underlying transactions and events in a manner that achieves fair presentation. Obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence regarding the financial information of the entities or business activities within the group to express an opinion on the consolidated financial statements. We are responsible for the direction, supervision, and performance of the group audit. We remain solely responsible for our audit opinion. We communicate with those charged with governance regarding, among other matters, the planned scope and timing of the audit and significant audit findings, including any significant deficiencies in internal control that we identify during our audit. We also provide those charged with governance with a statement that we have complied with relevant ethical requirements required by independence and to communicate with them all relationships and other matters that may reasonably be thought to bear on our independence and where applicable actions taken to eliminate threats or safeguards applied. From the matters communicated with those charged with governance, we determined those matters that were of most significance in the audit of the consolidated and standalone financial statements of the current period and are therefore the key audit matters. We describe these matters in our auditor's report unless law or regulation precludes public disclosure about the matter or when, in extremely rare circumstances, we determine that a matter should not be communicated in our report because the adverse consequences of doing so would reasonably be ex expected to outweigh the public interest benefits of such communication. Report on other legal and regulatory requirements. As required by the Jamaican Companies Act, we have obtained all the information and explanations which, to the best of our knowledge and belief, were necessary for the purposes of the audit. In our opinion, proper accounting records have been kept so far as appears from our examination of those records and the accompanying consolidated and standalone financial statements are in agreement therewith and to give the information required by the Jamaican Companies Act in the manner so required. The engagement partner on the audit resulting in this independent auditor's report is Garfield Rees. PricewaterhouseCoopers, Chartered Accountants, Kingston, Jamaica, 29 February, 2024. Thank you. Mr. Thompson, on behalf of shareholders and, and those charged with governance, we thank you. I'd like to introduce you to other directors here present. Uh, I think you're familiar with most of them, but I'd like to introduce you first to Mr. Grantley Stevenson, our Deputy Chairman, our CEO, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Mark Williams, Mr. Bruce Breckheisen, Ms. Kathleen Moss. Mr. 
That's not unique to Mrs. Master, that's a general thing. <laughs> Mr. Robert Scavone. Mr. Kim Clark. Mr. Roger Hines. Mr. Charles Johnston. Mrs. Charmaine Mirage. Mr. Dorian Valdez. And our newest director, Mr. Philip Armstrong. I now ask our Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Mark Williams, to introduce some of the senior members of his management team. Mrs. Diana Big Bennett, General Manager of KW Logistics. Captain George Reynolds, Managing Director of Security Administrators Limited. Captain Reynolds? Is that a back there? Mrs. Simone Murdoch, Corporate Services and Client Experience Manager. Mr. Alfred McDonald. Could we get some light on? So Mr. Alfred McDonald, Business Development Manager. Mrs. Terry Ann Gordon, Financial Controller. Mrs. Frances Mighty Hutchinson, Internal Audit Manager. Mr. Lancelot Green, Director of IT. Mr. Andre McFarlane, Deputy IT Manager. And the new kid on the block, Mr. Farrell Alexander, Director of Engineering. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, and before we proceed with the business of this meeting, I just want to draw your attention to the annual report, which sets out for your benefit a 10-year review of the key performance indicators for this enterprise. And you will note there that over that 10-year period, we've tripled the shareholders' equity of this business, we've tripled the profit, we've tripled the dividend, and quadrupled the amount of cash still on the balance sheet for expansion. And the share price is up four and a half times in that cycle. And it is my belief, and I believe the belief of the board, that this doesn't happen by accident. We believe that this is the work of serious people who are engaged in the management and oversight and leadership of this enterprise. And we wish to thank them for their work and dedication to this project. Ladies and gentlemen, let us now proceed with the business of this meeting as set out in the notice. I will first invite Mr. Mark Williams to make a presentation on the performance for the year and the outlook for 2024. And then I intend to acknowledge individuals who raise their hand to speak and say their name and their status as a shareholder. Good morning, everyone. It's interesting that the chairman just gave my presentation, tripling the profit, doubling the dividend. Thank you so much, chairman. Chairman Jeffrey Hall, directors, shareholders, members of the media, KW team members, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is so good to see everyone this morning. As usual, I'd like to start by acknowledging, you know, all my shareholders are very special, but Mr. Staple holds a very special place for all of us at Kingston Wall. So Mr. Staple, it's so good to see you again this morning, sir. 
You know, as I reflect on the achievements over the past year, I want to extend my sincere gratitude to Chairman Jeffrey Hall, to the directors for your continued good counsel and good challenge. I want to extend gratitude also to our customers, many of whom are here this morning, to our business partners, to you, our shareholders, for your unwavering support to myself as CEO and certainly to the entire KWL family. Uh, your confidence and your support has been very instrumental in the success of this company. At KWL, we believe that true excellence goes beyond just the services that we provide, but it is embodied in the, by the unrelenting spirit of accountability, commitment, and excellence of the KWL team. And therefore, you know, as I reflect and before we go through all the successes of 2023, it would be remiss of me if I not at the onset say a special thank you to this, this wonderful management team that I have the opportunity to lead and the entire KW family. I want to say special thanks to every car driver, to every truck driver, to every stacker operator, crane operator, stevedore, cashier, planner, mechanic, everyone in the entire KWL family. And just to give you an overview of what they do, please turn your attention to the screen for this video. The volume wouldn't help a bit. All right, so if there's no volume, we'll move on. All right, are going to try once more? Okay, we'll get it at the end. Get at the end. All right. So just to give you a quick overview of what we'll talk about this morning, I'll give you an overview of the business. Um, the video would have helped on that, but never mind. Then we will go to the successes of 2023. And then I'm going to give you, have a conversation about what we call birthing success, uh, Kingston Walls, and then quickly give you an update on where we are for 2024. So our business, we are a multi-purpose port facility. It means that we handle anything that moves, be it containers, brake bulk, lumber, steel. We see ourselves as the fuel for economic growth for Jamaica. And as most of you may know, approximately 85% of global commerce is done via um, ship and the sea. And therefore, we see ourselves at Kingston Wharf, as I said, as anchoring the Jamaican economy and providing economic growth. That's one aspect of what we do. The next aspect is that we are a lead logistics provider. And it means that we're involved in warehousing and offering logistics support. So we move automobiles, food and beverage, manufacturing petroleum, energy, et cetera, et cetera. It means, therefore, that whatever you see in your supermarkets, whatever you see in your large distributors, chances are those commodities would have passed through Kingston Wharfs. We do this by being the gateway, the Caribbean's gateway to the world. We move cargo to over 45 different countries, as far away as Australia, New Zealand, this company that you have invested in, 
we are indeed the Caribbean gateway to the world. I want to have a conversation with you shareholders about what I consider to be an exceptionally good performance in 2023 amidst high inflation, uh, other economic challenges, global threats, etc. Your company managed to deliver strong results. Revenue of $9.7 billion, up 2% over solid year last year. Operating profit of $3.9 billion, 22% over last year. That is enough to be proud of for the company that you have invested in. But let me give you some context for the operating numbers. Clearly, if your revenue is moving by 2% and your operating profit is going by 22%, there is a story there. Now, clearly, this wonderful management team that I have the opportunity of leading, we're very focused on cost. And within that 22%, we would have had about $200 million reduction in our direct and operating cost. And that is good because of good focus. But it would be remiss of me if I didn't share with you the conversation that started last year, where we would have had a foreign exchange loss of just about $180 million. The good news for last year is that we've recovered that, and there's a foreign exchange gain of just over 200 million US dollars. Those are you know, some of the reasons for that healthy 22% increase in operating profit. You notice that your total assets have gone up by 38%. Now, Kingston was, by the nature of what we do, is a very capital intensive business. And we tend to be very focused on our strategic imperatives. And part of that is renewing and adding to our assets. And we would have added just about $6 billion in assets in 2023. Shareholders' equity, again, very strong numbers, 29%. But let me take you through a deeper dive of those numbers. So as I said, revenue last year gone up by 2%, but I want you to look at the trend over the last five years. And you know, I challenge you to find a solid business, real business, I'm not talking you know, moving money, monies around, that can give you 23% increase over a five-year period for your revenue. We're just shy of $10 billion. Again, the story is consistent for our operating profit over the last five years. The trajectory has shown that we've increased the operating profit by 28%. Again, as I said, we have two segments, two different buckets of our business, terminal and warehouse and logistics. A few years ago, the conversation was that we wanted to move the logistics part of our business to be about 30%, while terminal being 70. Well, we've achieved that, and then some. 35% of our revenue is from our fast-growing logistics business, and 65 from our terminal business. The plan for 2030 is that we would have equal contribution in revenue and profit from each of the segments of our business. But again, let me take another deep dive in showing you the business of terminal operations and logistics. So our terminal operations there, over the past five years, again, the trajectory is positive. Last year, we would have had a reduction in our terminal revenue and that's mainly due to varying factors. Supply chain issues, war in Ukraine, drought in Panama, reducing the number of vessels that would come um, through the canal, et cetera, et cetera. And equally important, we were doing major construction on Bird 7, and that would have reduced the capacity of the terminal to manage vessels. But I have good news, and you will see it in the outlook. The business has returned. 
But take a closer look at the logistics business. Logistics revenue is up 52% in the past five years. Operating profit, shareholders, has moved in excess of 100%. It's really a fast moving, growing business. We see ourselves as experts in this area, and I'll share with you again some strategic initiatives that we're taking um, in, the next, in this year and going forward that we will continue to strengthen the numbers there. Good, solid results by any measure. But what does this mean for you as shareholders? Shareholders' equity for the past five years, again, I'm sharing with you a trend, 73% increase. Year on year, that is 29% increase in shareholders' equity. Your dividend, 26% over the last five years. We're approaching dividend of a billion dollars. So a business that gives profit of 3.2, 3.5 billion dollars, a capital intensive business that requires the capital to go back in the business, we're giving to our shareholders a billion dollars in dividend. If I was elsewhere, I would pause for an amen but you could applaud. Um, <laughs> earnings per share, again, the story is the same, continue over the last five years, 21% increase in profit. But what I just shared, shareholders, those are the financial numbers. What I want to share with you now are some of the things that go behind those numbers. And in 2023, Kingston Wharves went on a journey of major capital investment. And I want to share with you an update on some of those investments as we, what we say, birth new successes. I'm hoping that we do have sound for this video that will come up in a bit. We announced in 2022 that the company was investing $60 million of your money for some key capital projects that would ensure that we have a well-invested, well-appointed terminal and logistics business. And we did just that. We would have spent just over $30 million on the upgrade and development of Bird 7. And I'm very pleased to announce Promise made, promise kept. We delivered that within budget on time. We did major dredging, drainage. We acquired equipment, state-of-the-art equipment that is required in this very competitive business that we have. And also drive our logistics business with the construction of what we consider to be best-in-class logistics facility in the Caribbean. Have a look at this video. that your money being invested, very well managed, and at the end of the day, 
deliver on a very important project, not just for Kingston Wharfs, but for shipping in Jamaica and the wider Caribbean. At this point, I would like to extend you know, special thank you to Director Dorian Valdez, who took special interest in this project and was the board oversight director on this project. Mr. Valdez, please stand and let the shareholders acknowledge you. Thank you. You would have seen some very familiar faces um, in that video, but I just want to highlight a few persons just to give you an idea of the importance of this project, as I said, not just to Kingston Wharfs, but to Jamaica. You would have seen the US Ambassador Nick Perry in that video. Um, we had a US contractor on the project, and we're very pleased that that US contractor used local labor um, so the expertise could have been transferred um, in what we do here at Kingston Wars. Equally important, the president of Seaboard Marine, Mr. Eddie Gonzalez, thought it fit that he would join us for the commissioning ceremony. Now, Mr. Gonzalez is, as I said, the president of Seaboard Marine, our largest customer. He's been represented here by Ms. Cora and Robertson Sylvester. Where is Cora? She, oh, stand close, Cora, please let them see you. All right. And also want to acknowledge Professor Gordon Shirley, President and CEO of the Port Authority of Jamaica, because this in, in the, is indeed a partnership. So that's Bird 7. Have a look at Ashenine Road. Cargo is always on the move through the global supply chain. From manufacturing hubs, transiting busy shipping gateways, to distribution centers, retail outlets, and into homes and businesses. Kingston Wharves, a leading provider of terminal services and warehousing, is maximizing service to the industry with the construction of its integrated logistics complex at Ashenheim Road in Kingston. A 25 million US dollar project, the first phase comprises a 74,000 square foot dry warehouse and 57,000 square feet of cold storage, adding to the company's approximately 400,000 square feet of logistics space. Located in a special economic zone, the complex affords regional and global distributors KWL's unique SEZ and port-centric logistics benefits, along with multimodal access state-of-the-art logistics amenities, energy efficiency, customized value-added services. Kingston Wharf's Integrated Logistics Center is your shipping and logistics partner. From the center of everywhere, let us connect your business with global opportunities. I'm very pleased, um, shareholders, to report to you this morning that this facility has been fully subscribed for. Again, I would pause if I was elsewhere. I want to thank the team, Diana Blake Bennett, Alfred McDonald, and Simone Murdoch, the entire team, who have you know, worked tirelessly in ensuring that we have signed agreement for these blue chip tenants that we have in this facility. But that was last year, and yesterday's news. I want to share with you, shareholders, to take a sneak preview into the future. Now, Kingston Wharf has always look, is always looking to the future. We believe that our continuous transformation is one of the secrets for our longevity. Next year, we celebrate 80 years, and we are still in the process of renewal and transformation. You know, someone said that ships in harbor are safe, but that's not where ships are built to be. Kingston Wharf was not built to rest on its laurels and play it safe. We are built for bold moves and to blaze trails. We see ourselves as pioneers, and we will continue to forge ahead on new journeys of growth and transformation. And therefore, this morning, I want to unveil KWR's very ambitious and bold capital investment plan for the next 
five years. We are proposing that with your partnership and your continued confidence, that we will continue to grow your company and we will be investing 100 million US dollars over the next five years. Let me give you an idea of what we are thinking of. I shared with you last year that we, based on the importance and continued growth of our car business, we needed to look at constructing a multi-level car park. We'll be doing that. Hopefully, we'll be breaking ground sometime this year to do that multi-level car park. We move in excess of 170,000 cars, as I said, to Australia, New Zealand. We spoke about the development of Bird 7. We want to move again for the development of Bird 6 within the next five years. Obviously, as you continue to expand your terminal capacity, you need to have equipment. And I introduced to you Mr. Farrell Alexander, um, Director of Engineering. Farrell has had extensive operations um, experience in equipment maintenance all over the world. And he joined us um, maybe two months ago or a month or so ago to continue the building out of our entire maintenance team. I also want to acknowledge Mr. Wayne Johnson, who is here. Um, Wayne, part of the maintenance team, again, tremendous experience. And of course, we're very mindful that the nature of our business, just based on the environment where we are, we need to be very focused on climate change adaptation and we'll be investing in that area. But that's our terminal business. We'll be also looking to expand our logistics business as we continue to see increasing demands for nearshoring. Certainly what COVID has taught us is that manufacturers and distributors certainly want to have their cargo closer home. And as I said, the facility at Ashton and Rowan has been fully subscribed, all blue chip um, tenants, and we hopefully will be breaking ground this year for phase two of Ashton and Road. We've heard the cry of our business partner in Western Jamaica that they long for a well-integrated facility with the expertise of ourselves and business partners that we have. And I'm here to share with you that Kingston Wars will be establishing a warehouse and logistics facility in Western Jamaica. More to come on that as we work through the details with our business partner. Again, you're missing an opportunity to applaud. This is your company, shareholders. And we are very bullish about the uh, possibilities in Jamaica over the next five years. So we've talked about the financial successes of the company. We've shared with you the capital development that we would have taken on over the past two years at $60 million plus and going. I've shared with you some plans for the next three to five years of another $100 million. But at Kingston Wars, we view ourselves as also good corporate citizen. And therefore, it's not all about the money and the infrastructure. It's what we give back to society. So we are very focused on giving back to society. You would have seen in the first clip there, um, Mrs. Murdoch with Father Holong. There we go. So we're big into community outreach. We're big into youth development, giving back, be it through sports, um, Jamaica Under 15 cricket, through education. We, 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 we sponsor schools within the community, what we call our borderline community involvement. Um, and we just think that it is very important for Kingston Wharves to not just succeed as a company, but ensure that the stakeholders within Jamaica and even more so close to the community also see some of those successes. 
shareholders, you know, at times when you work hard and you are acknowledged by your peers or industry experts, it gives you a sense of humility and causes you to be humbled. At Kingston Wharf, we are very humbled that we have been recognized for some stellar achievements. And today I'm sharing with you the special economic zone. I seen it fit to award Kingston Wharf's two special awards this year. The Jamaica Customs Agency, um, a very good strategic partner, has also acknowledged our efforts. And also the Organization of American States has acknowledged KW's effort. This year, we would have been the recipient for the 2024 Maritime Award for the Americas in the category of Port Security and Risk Management. This award, shareholders, is an acknowledgement of KWL's significant investment in technology-driven security solution. Kingston Wars came out on top of over 20 entrants in countries all across North America and Latin America. And your company, Kingston Wars, came out on top. Now, at this point, I want to acknowledge the partnership of other stakeholders. Security is never just one entity um, doing, and therefore I want to acknowledge the business relationship and partnership of the Port Authority of Jamaica and Jamaica Customs Agency. You would recall, shareholders, that I shared with you last year that KW also was the recipient in 2021 for the Port Industry Award, Excellence in Technology and Innovation. But again, let me share with you some of the strategic initiatives that we're focusing on. Obviously, because some are sensitive, I'm trying to go back control. Okay, I'm not going back, I'm going forward. It's a good thing. All right, so what I wanted to speak to uh, shareholders about is that we're very focused on data protection. Um, very focused on data protection, cybersecurity, um, data analytics to drive our business. We believe that if you're going to compete and compete effectively in this very competitive world, you need to be at the forefront of technology. And that's what we're doing. All right, I'll, thank you. Growing our business through digital transformation. Data protection, we have a team being led by the, our attorney and our IT guys focusing on data protection. Cybersecurity is very important. I want you to just rest assured that, again, we have a team very focused, single-mindedly focused on ensuring that the infrastructure in and around KW and our IT systems are safe. We are moving our processes online and we're ensuring that in everything we do, we continue to drive business through data analytics. Let me just quickly, as I close, to give you an overview of the first quarter. Again, as I said, good news. The revenue is up 2%, and again, you know, we tend to look at trends in our business to ensure that we're continuing on an upward trajectory. 2% up in revenue, 5% up in profit before tax. And as I said, the, now that Bird 7 has been commissioned, we're seeing a positive um, benefits from that. Just to give you a sneak preview in the way we think at Kingston Wars, we are continue to be committed to birthing many more successes. All our investments in our business, infrastructure, digital technology, and people are geared at building a customer-centered and performance-driven culture. Every Monday morning, when I meet with the senior executive team, we are about performance-driven, managing KPIs, looking at the cost, looking how best we can grow our business, how best we can replace manual processes with technology to drive our business. 
Over the past four years, I tend to end with this slide, shareholders, to give you a sense of assurance that this business of KW, the ship is steady. We have a strong balance sheet. We have a competent management team. And we have very experienced and competent boards of directors. I thank you for your confidence. Thank you for your continued support that you have given the entire KWL team. Thank you so much. You could say our strength lies in nearly 80 years of building a formidable shipping and logistics company, driven by innovation, vision, and a resolve to make yesterday's success pale in comparison to the stellar achievements that are always up ahead. You could say our strength lies in the transformation of our landscape as we push the boundaries and conquer digital frontiers for operational efficiency, service delivery, and profitability. Ever moving, expanding, and growing to attain boundaryless possibilities. We say it's all true, but that's just a part of our story. We say our real strength lies in a committed team, the movers and shakers behind the scenes. Offloading cargo from huge ships, driving cars over ramps for transshipment and the domestic market. They are vessel planners, mapping with precision to ensure ships make safe journeys to global destinations. They make sure engines and work run smoothly without fail. Drive trucks, stackers and cranes. They do the heavy lifts and unpack containers to meet delivery targets. They make sure you and your cargo are secure. Expertly manage your transactions, share information, greet with smiles, lead with integrity, and more. They are the people behind the moves. They're not always seen. They're not always loud or in the forefront. They are relentless, simply working with quietness and diligence, but on every continent. In over 45 global destinations, their impact is felt. They are the quiet strength behind our moves. Thank you very much, Mark. That was very comprehensive and, frankly, motivating. I invite shareholder questions. Yeah. Is there a microphone? I'll invite um, you to state your name, and then, David, you can be next, and, and your status as a shareholder. I think we can hear you. Mr. Mike Chip, um, I have a little thing, the gentleman, I don't quite remember his name, um, Mr. William, Mr. William, um, you mentioned um, she, uh, she was a dividend, say, good and thing. So my concern is, if you see a good dividend, say, I have about two million, as a minor shareholder, I have about at least two million, if you see a good dividend. Because then 15,000 as a minor shareholder, then I see no good dividends. That may have to say to you here. So, Thank you. Yeah. You can turn to page. Sorry, I thought you were going to say that you were buying more shares. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. That man. <laughs> and you, this is Mr. Livingston Young? Yes, Mr. Okay. You can turn to page. Can I can I in here? Page um, 87. No GA. Risk. Credit risk. The group and the company. Well, everything already in the book, but we just elaborate on it. Go, be All right. The first one is trading and receivables. The other one is other receivables. The group and compliance, short-term investment, cash at bank. You could explain to me the group and the company. All right. The first one is seventy-six million seven hundred and forty-four thousand. The other other receivables, one hundred and fifty-six million five hundred and forty-nine thousand. The compliance, short-term investment of 11 million, 161,669 cents. And the other one is cash and at bank of what? 923 million, 400. You can have an explanation of the 2021 one. Thank you, Mr. Young. Yeah. 
Do you have any questions, other questions at this time? We'll just take one more and I'll, we'll try to answer more. Ones. Yeah, come in. The other one. This is in US, US dollars. Profit before, um, page, page 96. Profit before taxation, current, current rate, 2022, 2023. No, give me explanation, one, minus one, plus four. I don't know what this signifies, the bracket between 73 million, 730 thousand. That's the 2023 and 2022 of 87 million and 44,000. Bottom line of 346 million, 168,000. Could I explanation? Yes, this? we can explain both. Thank you very much, Mr. Young. Um, Clover, can you give a brief explanation to credit risk on the one hand? I think that's on page 87 and, and the um, market risk on foreign currency on page 96. Good morning, shareholders. The risk notes um, to which you referred, Livingston, one is a credit risk. What it's actually looking at is, it measures what is our, it's looking at our credit risk for the portfolio. The numbers you have referred to is looking at the items on our balance sheet. Those are the balances that um, we would have um, some credit risk exposure and the note is just asking us to reflect those amounts. So if I can say it slightly differently, and we're not going to take a lot of time on this particular point, but Mr. Young, we have assets in our balance sheet, and one of those assets is where people owe us money. And we are sharing with you the list of those assets. And the good news is that the vast chunk of them are so-called short-term investments, and we have a very close handle on that. The next point. The, oh, other, other receivables, 156 million. What made up the, the, the others then? Clover, other receivables? Yeah, what make, made up 156 million, 546. In general, Mr. Young, let me just say to you while, while we uh, give you a response, there are two types of receivables in this business. One is where, in the ordinary course of business, our customers owe us money. And that's called that trade receivables. And the other category, uh, is a small group of receivables from other items. And do you want to give some examples, Clover? That would, be, that, that would include any prepayments that we may have made would be in those numbers. Okay. So, Mr. Al, Mr. Young, I'm going to answer your second question or, through, through our CFO, and then we're going to um, entertain one more question from you, and then we're going to move on. Excuse me? No, Mr. Wamiki won't collect with the hotel, if we collect our business, you know, so if we collect up, man. All right, thank you. On the FX. This is so the percentage change in, in, the, in the currency has an impact on the profit? This is a sensitivity note. It's merely saying if there was a 1% change in the foreign exchange rate, what would be the impact of the foreign currencies that we're holding? That's what it's actually saying. So that's 73 million, or the, the figure for the 73 million is saying if there was a, a reduction in the currency rate, that that is the amount that would be reflected in your profit and loss. Mr. Rose? You have a question, sir? Yes, sir, I have to do with Williams and Stevenson. Uh, good morning to the board of directors. Good morning to the shareholders and other persons who might be watching this recording. Uh, so can I direct this question to the CEO, Mr. Chair? Yep. So earlier during your presentation, you spoke about the US $100 million investment to be executed over the next five years. I was going back through the company, specifically the company at the group, but I'm looking at the debt equity perspective, and I realized that the debt equity has gone up from 8% to about 20% year over year, which is not concerning. So in terms of this future plans and uh, objectives, the first question is with respect to funding this initiative in terms of are you looking at just straight bank loan debt, potential capital markets, or what means do you see as a way to fund some of these ventures, joint ventures, and so forth? Typically, you know, we're open to all possibilities, but we generally use bank loans um, so far, but, you know, we're taking a look at the market 
And you know, what I would want to advise shareholders is that we continue to use the best instrument um, that will allow us room to make these large amounts of investments. Um, you know, you talk about the debt equity, and there are certain covenants with our existing loan. And what you'll realize is that all of these investments are revenue-generating investments. So, yeah. No, I appreciate it. And just to follow up on the second question, and this is just with respect to the five-year plans. You mentioned earlier looking to create that integrated space on the western end of the island as more likely would have been somewhere in the St. James or Westmoreland area. I know you see you haven't developed all the details as yet, but could you give more of a synopsis as to what you're envisioning for that obje future objective? Yeah, well, as I said, you know, we're having discussion with our business partner, but suffice to say, what we're looking for is to replicate what we have in Kingston. So your facility that will facilitate less than container load, full container load, your personal effects, but also offer opportunities for 3PL um, type of service. Uh, could you just remind me and audience what the 3PL is? Third party logistics. So yeah. we pick, we pack. So, you know, you will break down uh, cargo with 100 pieces. You might add labels to them. You might finish them in some ways or form. You hold inventory. You manage inventory, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's 3PL. Thanks. And then my second question: Can no other person have questions asked? Earlier, you mentioned the Ashenham property and how some of the tenants are supposed to move in in short order. Uh, I cannot. I, I can't really recall the value of the investment, but what is the kind of return you are looking at from the Ashenham development going forward? So. You can, you can potentially state the value of the investment and what the potential rental revenue or expected earnings relative to that investment as a return for us to understand. Sure. So, you know, I'll answer that by saying two things. Um, when we do analysis of projects like these, we look at the rental yield, and I'll tell you the numbers are strong double digit, um, but we also look at the services that we're providing through the facility, because we see ourselves as more than just a landlord, and therefore we want to offer the additional 3PL services. And therefore the returns, as you're seeing in the numbers, are strong, healthy returns. I don't want to be very specific right now because, you know, we do have competitors. No, understood. Thanks. I'll come back in a bit. Uh, good morning, um, Mr. Hall. How are you, sir? Good um, to see you. Mr. Williams. Um, significant persons. Um, I'm Carrie, Carrie Berry from Mayberry. Mayberry. Uh, I have a couple questions, a lot of questions, but I'm just, they're just going to be not long but short. Okay, can you just write them down? I didn't see any mention of ESOP, employee share ownership. Uh, so that's one. Two, I would like to ask about, I heard it mentioned in the annual general meeting last year, about renewable energy, and I noticed that Ashenheim Road, you have a lot of solar. I wanted to know the, if there was a significant contribution towards reduction of putting energy back on the grid or saving. I'd like to speak to solar renewable, that's two. Three, the company Kingston Wharves is a massive undertaking for an island. I haven't heard any discussion about comparison within the Caribbean, North American, South American region as to size and how, whether we're the, the, the monopoly, whether, who, what are we, so that we know what we have purchased. And the last and final thing, if I know it's, I heard that Kingston North is a very dangerous place, but would it be possible for us to, and this is the last one, to have a tour, like you put us, dress us up in hard hat, drive us around, and show us what we have actually purchased. Thanking you. Okay, thank you very much, Kerry. Um, so Mark, I'll just remind you of them. ESOP? Well, we'll do them one uh, we, at a time. We do have an ESOP, and um, if you look in the, um, the, the financials, or the, the shareholdings, 
you will see the KWR Employer Share Ownership Trust on page 53. Okay, so that's, that's working and we can certainly give more details offline if that's of interest. Energy transition, decarbonization, you know, Energy, what is your level of focus on that, Mark? Um, and in particular, focused, Ashnaim Road. Sorry, Chairman. We're very focused on managing energy given the nature of our business. As you have said, um, there is a fair amount of solar panels at Ashnaim Road and there are panels at the main office as we speak. Um, we don't think we're at the stage yet to sell back to the grid. The facility at Ashenai Road will be 24 hours. It includes the cold storage. Um, it's something we're looking at. We're very pleased, um, shareholders, to share with you that as we continue to look at decarbonization, um, our largest customer seaboard, they do have news. Um, I, will, I will allow them to share that at the time. But just at a high level is that they'll be using LNG vessels and larger vessels coming into Kingston. And Kingston Wars has been at the forefront of facilitating fueling of vessels in Kingston with LNG. Thank you, Mark. And then a question about uh, benchmarking other terminals. You highlighted some international awards, but um, is there anything that you can say about how we should think of ourselves relative to our peers regionally? Certainly. So, you know, in the terminal business, there are really two broad um, segments of terminal. There are those terminals that are primarily a container terminal. And then the other terminals, like ourselves, who are multi-purpose. And therefore, as I said, we move containers, we move cars, we move lumber, we move steel. So when you look at KW within the region as a multi-purpose terminal, we are best in class. And the accolades and the awards have testified to that. So we are not your global transshipment container terminal, but for a multi-purpose terminal, touching every continent, touching 45 countries, we are, as they say, a big deal as a multi-purpose terminal within the region. And then, you know, we're, we own the company, Mark. You referenced it many times in your remarks. So why can't we all just go hang out down there and visit your terminal? Um, I would love to have everyone. You know, I'm, I noticed um, the, press, the CEO of the Shipping Association of Jamaica. I want to acknowledge Trevor Riley. And through this um, SAJ, the Shipping Association of Jamaica, they do facilitate tours of the terminal. Um, so you could choose to go through the Shipping Association of Jamaica or just call us and we'll arrange that. Obviously, uh, we don't see the place as dangerous. We see the place as having safety standards, and therefore we'll facilitate tours, guided tours, and we'll be more than happy to have you come and look at the company that you own, and maybe like Mr. Um, you'll, you'll probably buy more shares. So we welcome the visits. But just, just give us I a mean, call. But the points you made you know, here are very well taken, and, and the particular comment about being able to visit is one that you know we, we try to facilitate if we can, but there are limits, because it, it we wouldn't describe it as, as dangerous. We actually would describe it as, as safe because we've invested so heavily in precautions and measures and, um, and, uh, and standards and rules. Um, and therefore, it is complex to visit. It's also safe from the perspective of, of, of uh, customs and the, the, the cargo that moves through the terminal that also has to be kept safe. But under very managed circumstances with a limited group, a tour is possible, and we'll, we'll take the, the request and suggestion on board. Yes, sir. Hi, good morning, Chair. Um, through you, I would just like, first of all, I'd like to congratulate the company. Um, this, as you started off, um, Mr. Chair, that this 10 year statistical review, you know, numbers don't lie, people do. So <laughs> the numbers speak for themselves. Um, as a former stockbroker, I used to own shares in Kingston Wall. My main purpose of coming to the meeting is to determine whether I should own some more shares again. So no, I am because this is a telling uh, story. Um, I just wanted to, to highlight as a comment, Mr. Staple was gracious enough to give me uh, one question uh, yeah. so before he has the mic. So I let me not stay too long. But 
I, it's actually not really a question, but a comment, because as the shareholders in here, if you look on the stock price and the earnings per share and the PE ratio, it's really a no-brainer not to be buying the stock right Sorry, now. could you say that again? Based on the PE ratio of 12, the PE of 12, yeah. if you look on uh, page 13 and 14, just for the purposes of the meeting, if you look in 2014, the stock price was $6 and the PE was 10.17. Now the stock price is at 27 and we close of the year and it's at 12.22. You can see where in 2018 it was higher 77 and the PE was 56. Okay. It's on a level of investment that I see you guys doing here and the tra trajectory where I'm seeing the company going. Okay. I think it's really a no-brainer. So at this point in time, when people are shying away from the market, I think you should be buying the stock. Okay. Thank you, Chair. All right. I'm not licensed to give investment advice, but I imagine you are. <laughs> Great day, Mr. Chairman. Christopher Burrow. One quick point. Years ago, when we opened the new terminal, I made a suggestion that we brand the whole area like a certain telecommunications company has done the park at halfway tree. We haven't seen anything happen on that yet. Is there a hold up or is it in the future plan? Mark? Thank you for that. Um, you know, we do plan to do some branding, but what we'd like to do first is to get the area, you know, cleaned up, um, have the climate controls issues, the drainage issues been resolved. Uh, we're working with the Shipping Association of Jamaica and the neighboring communities on that. Um, as part of our 80th anniversary. We're hoping to have that in place, but before we brand, we want to ensure that the place is you know, well invested and some place that you can be proud of. Thank you. Mr. Staple. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Lloyd Staple. I would like to congratulate you, Mr. Chair, members of the board, and the employees was very hard work that they put into Kingston Walls. I'm sure it's not an easy task, getting all this information together. And I must congratulate you, sir, Mr. CEO, and your staff, for the excellent work that you have done to bring Kingston Walls to where it is today. Thank you very much, sir. I would like to also thank the auditors for the very professional way in which they have read and demonstrated to us as shareholders that investing in a company is very important and we play an important role in the investment of the company. Mr. Chair, turn me to page 59. Key audit items. Key audit items. The balances are significant to the financial statements of the group and the company. But what about the employees? What about the shareholders? So Mark, Where the, the importance comes in? You're kind of relative importance of kind of tangible net worth versus the intangibles of employees and, and yeah. other considerations. So, you know, Mr. Staple, thank you for that. That's where I started the conversation, by acknowledging the shareholders, their confidence and their continued investment in Kingston Walls, and also acknowledging the employees. Um, you recall every car driver, every truck driver, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the auditors, as I said, you know, give you the numbers. The employees, the staff, we feel we're a family at Kingston Walls, and they're, as the video shows, behind the moves. Yeah, it's a temptation. Yeah, sorry. No, it's a temptation in a business with as much tangible net worth and infrastructure as Kingston Wharves to just view it as, uh, you know, a large amount of concrete and steel. But I think, you know, your point, Mr. Staple, is well taken that, you know, we really have to view it as a much more comprehensive asset. And that steel and concrete would be not worth what it is if the team members were not um, getting the results. I, I will have to discuss this with you afterwards. 
I'm uh, happy with the explanation, but I will discuss it with you afterwards. Turn me to page 63. Are you concerned about, just to be clear, and I don't mind tabling it or discussing it later, but are you concerned that the auditors have highlighted as a key audit matter the um, review of the valuation of the freehold land and buildings? I, I have my doubts as to the numbers okay. that are represented, but I will talk to you afterwards. Can I just say to you, just because I think it's important um, if you put it on the table, that what I think the auditors were saying, and of course they're here present, is that they identified this matter uh, as being significant and therefore um, worthy of additional scrutiny. And not only scrutiny, but they also took the effort for the benefit of shareholders to clarify how that scrutiny um, was applied. And in particular, they referenced inspecting valuation reports and agreeing the fair value uh, for the group and the company's accounting records um, and recalculating revaluation gains by reference to the valuation reports and the accounting re records, um, comparing the current valuations with previously completed valuations to determine whether useful lives and ages of property were consistent, reviewing the valuations with the assistance of their own independent experts, performing independent evaluation of the assumptions, the underpinned evaluation, referring to relevant market data, and then based on those procedures performed, they, they adjudicated or took the view that the values recorded for the fair values of the revaluation surplus were not unreasonable. So I just wanted to put that before, and obviously, Mr. Staple, we will definitely make the time to have further discussions. You see, Mr. Chair, my concern is that you can use numbers to represent anything. You can use numbers to represent anything. As I said, I will discuss this with you all afterwards. Yeah. And, you know, this company takes very seriously the underlying valuation of the tangible assets. And we assess, and, and just to be clear, and Clover, you can assess this, this revaluation does not go through the p and Is that correct? No, it doesn't go through So this is a balance sheet item. Balance sheet. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Mr. Staple. As I said, turn it to page 63. What accounts for this number moving from 1 billion negative to a positive of 891 million billion dollars. What is it? Mr. Staple. Remeasurement of post-employment benefits. Remeasurement of post-employment benefits moving from 1 Yep. Million negative to a positive of 891 million. Mr. Staple, at the end of each year, our actuaries do a valuation of our pension fund. In 2022, having completed the valuation and based on the macroeconomic factors at the time, and we're talking now about the discount rates that were used, we were limited, although the surplus was over 1.5 billion in the fund, the company was unable to record that amount. It was limited by the asset ceiling. And the asset ceiling at the time was 500, a little over 500 million. In 2023, those factors have changed. The discount rate has been reduced. And as such, we have been able to carry onto a balance sheet the full value of the surplus of the pension fund asset. And that's what this increase is. So this is why there is a change between last year and this year. So we are not playing with the numbers then? I'm sorry? <laughs> we are not playing with the numbers. Definitely not. <laughs> I'm still not happy with that explanation. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Staple, I, I think it would be remiss of me, given my position as CEO, not to say something about your comments. Um, you know, we are we're very focused on corporate governance. We have people of high integrity that lead the, this company, and we have independent auditors who are, by any standard, world-class auditors. So, you know, as CEO, I stand behind these numbers, 
and I implore you as shareholders to do your investigation and come to the, I assure you that you come to the same conclusion that these numbers are true and of the highest standard and quality. Not challenging you, Mr. Staple, but I feel I just have to say that. Just two more questions and I will say. Turn to page 67. On the trade and other receivables. Moving from a, net, a positive of 26 million to 79 billion in 2023. What account for this? 79 million. To trade and other yep. receivables. Moving yes. from positive of 26.8 million to a negative of 79.8 million dollars. Yep. Fair question. Clover? This is showing the increase in our trade, trade and other receivables year over year. This is a matter of timing. If you look at note three, you would see that the current portion of our receivables has gone up over the comparing year over year. So it's a matter of timing, Mr. Staple. It's our revenues would have grown um, more significantly in, in December, and that has been collected subsequent to the year end. So did that have anything to do with the, the um, whatever it was in 2022? That illness? No, it wouldn't. No, no. This is new, new, new revenues that would have been generated in 2023. And in particular in December, that would have been collected subsequent to the, the year end. Still unhappy with the explanation. <laughs> Still a lot more to be explained. Okay. I'm not happy with that. Turn me to page 105 and last. Management fees. Why were there no management fees for the company, for the group, but for the company in 2022? Income to the company and not to the group for management fees, Clover? The, the management fees that you refer to under the company, those are charges that would have, that Kingston was the company, would have charged subsidiaries on a group basis that is normally eliminated. So that's why you have a balance under the company and none under the group. It would be consolidated. Um, uh, it would be uh, eliminated for the group. So that's 77.8 per you're, ha uh, you're happy with that question, Mr. Staple? That's your first happy? Mr. Staple, that's not your management fees. That's the line for, called proceeds from claims. So that would have been um, some claim. We, we had a damage to a birth. We recovered that 77 million in 2022. Um, <clears throat> proceeds from claims in 2023 there, there were, was there. zero. Yes. So why was it 77.7%, 77.7 million in 2022? We, we had a damage to one of our births. We collected the, that was recoveries for the work done to repair that birth. There was not a similar uh, incident in 2023, hence it is zero. So am I to understand that Kingston Wharves is with the help of the employees are working towards achieving greater goals? Indeed, Mr. Stephen. Indeed. What's that? Yes, the answer is yes. Yes, with the help of the employees, we do expect to... And are you happy with the employees' participation in whatever is happening? Yes. Are you happy with that? Oh, yes, I am. I think we have a, a team of well-committed um, individuals that work at Kingston Walk. Do you think the employees can do more? <laughs> are you, are you, he might be negotiating a... a, a uh, a raise, Mark. So you be, yes. Uh, Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which would be well deserved. Can but they do more? 
I, I think, you know, I'm a hard taskmaster, so I'll always um, encourage the staff to give more, but I think they're giving their best, but I will still push, as I do for all shareholders every day, push to ensure that everyone gives off their best. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I am not happy with some of the explanations. <laughs> But as a minority shareholder, I would like to see greater involvement of our board members and our employees in the achievement of Kingston Hall. Can, for 2024, can we see that happen? Yes, sir. The employees and the shareholders and the, uh, and the, and the members of the group, yes. members of the board, can we see them participating more for 2024? Yes, you will. You will. Board, Mr. Staple would like you to participate more. Sorry, Mr. Johnson is asking for more fees, Mr. Staple. But thank you very much, Mr. Staple, for the comments. And, you know, frankly, um, we take seriously um, the matters you raise and we, we value it. The particular point about the numbers and in particular the real estate is one that you and I have discussed in other forums because um, it is important in our view for companies that um, value real estate to take seriously that valuation and not to use it as the basis of uh, movements in the PL that are not necessarily warranted. The good news in this company is that the real estate values don't go through the PL, and in fact, you know, we're strongly cash generative. If you look at our cash position year on year, it's strong. But these are matters that we continue to uh, apply scrutiny, apply tension, apply focus. And your particular comment about the role and involvement and value of the entire team is well noted. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I'm sure people like Mr. Johnson, Mr. Charlie Johnson, with his expertise, because I know him from way back. Yes. In the 60s and the 50s. <laughs> and his, his experience, his experience with the shipping association, etc. We're not letting him go anywhere. So with that experience, Mr. Staple, so. Kingston Wolves is going to grow significantly. And in 2024, shareholders will see a rapid increase in dividend payments. Am I correct? No pressure, Mr. Johnston. Thank you very much, Mr. Staple. Again, if it's injurious to the company, the state, it is public platform. It's I not here. Yeah, I appreciate the sentiment behind the questions. So one to two areas of competitive or comparative advantage for KW. You know, one of the areas of our competitive advantage is the diversity of the business that we offer, the multipurpose nature of the business that we offer. You'd have seen in some years where our container business might be down, other areas of our terminal operation um, would be up. Over the past two years or so, 
we would have seen significant increases in construction material and construction across Jamaica. And most of that would come through Kingston Hall. So clearly, competitive advantage is the multi-purpose nature for our business. And again, you know, the team that we have at Kingston Hall, the commitment of the team um, is just next to, to none. Uh, the expertise, the customer service focus that we offer, I think, you know, any business like Kingston Wharfs will tell you that the number one advantage is its people. Thank you. And then as far as the treasury shares, would that have been uh, ESOP related, Clover? So we, 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 have, we hold treasury shares, and I think it's somebody had asked this question, I think it's Kerry, um, do we have an ESOP? And then so those treasury shares are available on certain terms and conditions uh, to team members. Mr. Young? Yes, Mr. Um, Livingstone again. Um, we live in the country, first time. My, my grandfather come from England in the 70s. He always, you know, come to Jamaica all the while. Back in the days, it was England and swing, you know? So I always, I always hear about this Kingston, wives and all them here, there, you know? I realized that anybody that care them, they always have good hands when they care them things in Jamaica, and I was struggling with it. You understand? So, um, the next thing. The tour with Miss Kerry, the talk about the tour. We you know Kingston was, we see him as our shareholder and invite to some meeting. But he's a man like business. So we'd like to if, 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 if get a, a, a tour in the company, see what one has studied. You understand? So please look in at that too, when Miss Kerry talk. We'd like to know what one has studied. Mean that one has talk. We know it's true, but we want to see like business. We want to see the operation, what one has done. So we have to know what one has studied. All right. You can turn the page. Um, Page 103. The 31st, no, the end of the 31st of December. You know, do the top part, you got the middle, where net profit are, tabul are tabulated to ethics holding of the company. Now, explain to me a segment of assets, and uncritical assets, segment assets, unlocated assets. Liability, other segment interest, interest, income, capital expense, amortization descriptions. You can explain the commitment. Yeah, it's a, good, it's a good question. Let me just say something to Mr. Young quickly, because yeah. I think Mr. Williams discussed this in his presentation. Yeah. So I don't want to go back over it, but what he said in his presentation is that he sees Kingston Wharves having two big blocks of business the terminal business and logistics services. And what this table does is it very clearly, but he already showed you, it divides the revenues and the expenses between the two lines of business. There's a small amount of expenses and income that is not allocated narrowly within those two things. And the table also breaks it out. We are going to look into that and we're going to see what we can do. But I don't want to overpromise on that one. It's a very complex undertaking. So, Rose. Thanks again. I'm back. Uh, so, one question to Mr. Williams and to Mr. Miss Moody, and then probably I'll roll back again. So, to Mr. Williams, earlier you were mentioning the transition more of the company for our services online, and you mentioned. Cyber security. So, from the perspective of you know just the evolving environment we're in, how has you know Kingston Wharves worked over the last you know two or three years to really invest and secure its digital infrastructure? Um, you know. I it's an important question, but the answer is very sensitive. Uh, because Understood. you know this is being streamed. Um, <laughs> suffice it to say that we have invested heavily in protecting the IT infrastructure. But you would have seen we have gotten awards for technology and technology around security. Um, so we are fully invested in our defenses. We do, um, we continue to do audits and have external international partners doing audits of our um, 
IT systems, and we continue to do education, sorry, education trainings, learnings for staff to ensure that you don't click where you're not supposed to click, et cetera, et cetera. But suffice it to say at this point, we're very comfortable that we have a robust system in place. Thanks, Mark. And then my question to Flo, to Smoody. So just to clarify, uh, could you remind me is of the breakup between, for example, JME versus USC for Kingston Wars? Is it that Kingston Wars generates more serious revenue in US dollars? Kingston Wars generates its, you know, its, its revenues mainly in US dollars, yes. I appreciate it. And that probably comes against the backdrop of, you know, increased security costs as of June 1 and also increased wages and other increasing costs in the economy. So, honestly, in that context of where income is generated alongside the currency it does give some context as to how you're able to adjust in what we would call an aggressive, aggressive inflationary environment, but still some of observed inflation. Yeah. No, so, that, so I asked a question about the breakout of revenue. And because inflation is relatively simple up for some services and costs. Then just my additional question to Mr. Williams. So you mentioned the development of birth seven and birth six is the next major development point going forward in the next five years. So I recall in the past at prior meetings you mentioned that this development in the births is being done to prepare the company to take on Panama sized vessels. But in the last, we're in June now, so about the last five months, what has been your observation in terms of <laughs> the passage of ships uh, to King's Wharves in a sense, based on last year's disruption observed in the Panama Canal due to the, the drought that was being observed? Well, you know, I made mention in my presentation that last year the terminal business was down for those reasons that you mentioned, the construction of Bird 7 issues with Panama Canal. But the good news this year is that our numbers are up for container business. Um, just to give you a sneak preview, our transshipment business is already up in excess of 20% this year. Um, and as our shareholders and customers are here, I just want to acknowledge um, Seaboard and the impact as a customer that they have had on Kingston Walks and their numbers over Kingston has increased. Appreciate With a specific, I don't know if you wanted to, to talk about the impact of the Panama Canal. I think Mark's by implication is saying that uh, year to date is not adversely impacting our business. Not but. affecting us adversely. And clearly, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, the Panama Canal Authority have lifted some of the restrictions. So we have not seen any negative impact. And given the reset of those restrictions, um, we can only see positive coming yeah. from that. I mean, David, a lot of that volume is from Asia that would be affected by the Panama Canal. So it gives you a sense of the jurisdictions that we see the largest share of, um, no, Asia not being one. And I appreciate that because we're talking about a business that is affected necessarily just by other geopolitical events, but in this case, different climactic events which impact the ability for waterways to be adequately supplied with water to pass the passage of ships. So I really appreciate that. And just a final question to Mr. Williams is with respect to transshipment. So earlier you mentioned that, you know, with not transshipment, apologies, near shoring. So earlier you mentioned how with the advent of Aschenheim and other aspects of your current Kingston location in terms of facilitating that transshipment, that near showing perspective. And I recall earlier mention, you mentioned all the outlook for the next five years. Uh, even when you mentioned Western Jamaica, how will those Kingston worms foresee you know future demand with respect to near shoring and it be able to provide potential storage facilities or other services to meet that potential future demand. We're very optimistic about the future for Jamaica as a destination, and certainly Kingston Wharfs, given its experience in 3PL, that we expect that 
you know, we will be seeing cargo, increased cargo movement through Kingston and in particular Kingston Walsh. What I can tell you is that, you know, the business development team negotiating with a large regional player to actually have a, a large facility in Jamaica and hence phase two of Ash Nine Road is coming. Oh, so the one that the facility is open now is phase one and phase two is the next that we, that we expect to break ground this year. I appreciate the clarification because I didn't immediately understand earlier in your presentation. Phase one will be completed in another six to eight weeks, fully booked, um, lease signed, all blue chip tenants, and therefore we're going to break grounds for phase two. And phase two is in the same vicinity of Kingston. Same Wales. facility. The facility at Ashen and Road is just about 12 acres. And we do have maybe another three, three and a half to four acres that we'll construct phase two on. I appreciate it. Mr. Chair, sorry to that I forgot this particular question. What subsidiary got this loan of four hundred and seventy million dollars? Page one hundred and thirty one. Which subsidiary got this loan of four hundred and seventy million dollars? KW Logistics. What's that? K Kingston KW Logistics, one of our logistics companies. Is that a new company that was formed? It's a new company that has been operationalized recently, within the last two years. So this money is supposed to be paid back in 2027, am I correct? Correct. Morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Very strange. <laughs> There's a lot going on in this, in this enterprise. So that, that was an a intercompany loan, Clover? Or? Sorry? I didn't open it. Was it intercompany? It's an, it's an intercompany loan, yes it is. Right. So, so it's within the, the group within and you know, we're just funding the, the priorities of the business, which are precisely the priorities that were laid out by Mr. Williams earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your comments and your observations and your suggestions. Um, I trust that we've done, we've given responses to your satisfaction. I now wish to proceed with the consideration of the resolutions before us. Let me refer first to the first item of business, which is to receive and approve the audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2023. The accounts and the reports of the directors and the auditors have been previously circulated to members, and Ms. Rochelle Thompson from PricewaterhouseCoopers has read the auditor's report. And therefore, I now ask that the director's report, which you can find on page 21 of your annual report, be presented for review by shareholders. And I now ask our secretary to read the resolution for consideration. Uh, we, we can take a question before the vote. <laughs> Stefan, could you please read the resolution? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. At the audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2023, and the reports of the directors and auditors circulated with the notice convening the meeting be adopted. Mr. Steve, I'll take a question now. Yes. You're, you're moving? Motion? Okay, we'll take a motion. Is it a question or a motion? Motion, okay. Thank you. A second? Thank you. For those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. Any opposed? I declare the motion unanimously carried. Stefan, number two. That as recommended by the directors, the interim dividend of 25 cents per share paid on August 17, 2023 
and a 43 cents per share paid on January 16, 2024, V and, here, and are hereby declared as final and no further dividend be paid in respect of the year under review. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Second. Mr. Burrow. And you're not, you're, not, you're not barred from saying aye if you wish. And the quorum is three members present or by proxy. So if you wish to say aye, that's also fine, but you're also encouraged to raise your hand. All in favor, please raise your hands. Any opposed? You're opposed to? Okay, is that for note? Would you like us to record your opposition or is that for note? Are you voting in favor? Against. Against, okay, fine. So we will declare the motion carried with, with one uh, opposed and a comment. Thank you very much, Mr. Young. Ordinary resolution number three. We have directors retiring from office by rotation pursuant to article 107 of the company's articles. And those directors retiring by rotation are Messrs and Ms. Dams, uh, Grantley Stevenson, Kathleen Moss, Charmaine Mirage, and Robert Scavone, and all of the directors retiring uh, by rotation being eligible offer themselves for re-election. And therefore I now ask our secretary to read the resolution for consideration. That Mr. Grantley Stevenson V and is hereby re-elected a director of the company. Thank you, Mr. Staples. Thank you, Mr. Ms. Moss. A second? Mr. Burrow, thank you. All in favor? Any opposed? I have it. I declare the motion carried. Stephan. That Mrs. Kathleen Moss B and is hereby re-elected a director of the company. Thank you, Mr. Rose. A second, Mr. Burrow. All in favor? Any opposed? Clear the motion. Carried. That Mrs. Maraj, Mrs. Charmaine Maraj, be and is hereby re-elected a director of the company. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Thank you, Mrs. Michael. All in favor? Any opposed? I declare the motion carried that Mr. Robert Scavone be and is hereby re-elected a director of the company. Mr. Rose, Mr. Hines, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I have it. I declare the motion carried. Now, in accordance with Article 108 of the company's Articles of Incorporation, The, the, those directors um, are reappointed. But in accordance with Article 108, Mr. Philip Armstrong, who is required to retire after having been appointed to the board in 2023, um, will be proposed for uh, appointment, reappointment to the board, being eligible for re-election. Stefan, you want to read that resolution for us? That Mr. Philip Armstrong, who retires after having been appointed to the board in 2023, be and is hereby elected a director of the company. Mr. Rose, Ms. Johnston, all in favor? Any opposed? Congratulations, Mr. Armstrong. <laughs> I declare the motion carried. Welcome again. Number four. Appointment of auditors to the company and our authority as a board to fix their remuneration. Okay. Stefan? That PricewaterhouseCoopers chartered accountants, having agreed to continue in office as auditors, be and are hereby appointed auditors of the company to hold office until the, until the next annual general meeting at a remuneration to be fixed by the directors of the company. Mr. Staple, it's a very quick motion. It's young, second. All in favor? Aye. Excuse me, any opposed? I have it, I declare the motion carried. Yes, sir, you had a question? Yeah. 
Thank you. Fair question. Thank you. We have an answer. But you know, if you want to comment or give an answer? Two, year, two years. Thank you for the question. Number five. I'm sure we'll be waiting for this one. That the amount shown in the account of the company for the year ended December 31st, 2023, as fees of the directors for their service as directors be and are hereby approved. And those fees are in your annual report on page 104. Mr. Rose, thank you very much as a mo motion. Mr. Borrow, second, may we? All in favor? Any opposed? We declare that motion carried. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the formal business of this annual general meeting. I thank you for attending and for your continued confidence and support, which was shown to our team, to our board. I now declare this meeting closed. Thank you. say our strength lies in nearly 80 years of building a formidable shipping and logistics company driven by innovation vision and a resolve to make yesterday's success pale in comparison to the stellar achievements that are always up ahead you could say our strength lies in the transformation of our landscape as we push the boundaries and conquer digital frontiers for operational efficiency service delivery and profitability ever moving expanding and growing to attain boundaryless possibilities we say it's all true but that's just a part of our story we say our real strength lies in a committed team the movers and shakers behind the scenes offloading cargo from huge ships driving cars over ramps for transshipment and the domestic market they are vessel planners mapping with precision to ensure ships make safe journeys to global destinations they make sure engines and work run smoothly without fail. Drive trucks, stackers and cranes. They do the heavy lifts and unpack containers to meet delivery targets. They make sure you and your cargo are secure. Expertly manage your transactions, share information, greet with smiles, lead with integrity and more. They are the people behind the moves. They're not always seen. They're not always loud or in the forefront. They are relentless simply working with quietness and diligence, but on every continent. In over 45 global destinations, their impact is felt. They are the quiet strength behind our moves.